my little dragon, a gift from above. The things that we do for the ones we love. I really like that one. <laughs> oh, that, that was a very, that was a very, that was a very nice. Um, that was a, that was an amazing, <clears throat> an amazing story. I, I really liked it. Uh, anyways, um, let's see. Oh, here's. Oh, let's 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 get this formatting down. Uh, and then we shall start our next chapter. Ugh, I hate the formatting this thing does. Replace, delete, delete, delete. You please are crap. Right. Anyways, um, this is. Wait, I usually don't do. I usually don't do this like that. Ah, yes. Serious tone. <laughs> Serious tone. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Chapter 2 Judgment and Defiance Story March to the Scaffold by Foxy Kimchi The time has come. I have entered the belly of a beast, Crystal's thought, as she was carried into the royal palace. Even now, she still admired the beauty of, of a palace, its tearing wet walls, the grand architecture, the marvelous stained glass windows. She could not lie at this point. She was impressed with what ponies could build with her hooves. Chrysalis had planned on making this her new home after the invasion, as she too wanted a grand city for her subjects. But alas, instead of a trophy of victory, it would be the stage of her certain call. Oh, curtain call. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around, Chrysalis could see the soldiers beginning to break rank and go off in different directions. Some went to the infirmary. They could not show off their wounds forever unless they wanted them to get infected. The rest went either to the back the <coughs> Oof, the barracks for the rest or to the mess hall for a warm meal. This left only two soldiers, the two tasked with pulling the cage she was in. They looked at one another, confused. Their orders were to escort the prisoner to the palace, but now that they were here, they did not know what to do. Lucky for them, the moment of, of this fortune was short-lived. Attention! boomed a voice. No, not, no, not that voice, was the spot. As the two soldiers in front of her, ins of her instantly snapped to attention, looking straight ahead with impeccable posture, their mus her muscles tensed as she felt a gaze upon her. Not him, she thought, as her heart be quickened. At ease, soldiers. We'll take care of a prisoner from here. Go now and rest. You've earned it, a voice continued, this time accompanied by the sound of approaching hoofbeats. Yes, sir. The two soldiers saluted as they unbuckled themselves, happy to have that burden lifted from their backs and a chance to get real food. Chrysalis turned her head to find the source of a new voice. Her ears flattened as her fears were confirmed. There, accompanied by a squadron of guards, was her former food source, the current captain of the Royal Guard and the main reason for defeat, Shining Armor. Out of all the ponies in Canterlot, it just had to be him. Of course he would be here. Who else in Equestria holds a greater hatred for me than him? She thought bitterly. Chrysalis could only hope that he would not be her executioner. She was afraid he would be the only pony who would be willing to make her death painful. She was not afraid of the captain himself, but she was rather afraid of what he could do to her, as she knew he aboard her? Abhorred her. Okay. A-B-H. I know, I know that's why or is whore, but okay. Abhorred her. Never heard that word before, I'm sorry. <laughs> there was no doubt in her mind that she would be executed. She had come to terms with this and had accepted her unavoidable destiny. She was going to die in all cases, so in that regard she had nothing to lose and nothing to fear. However, as much, as much as she had stifled her mind from fear of death, 
the manner of her dark end worried her. If she was going to die, she hoped it would be quick and painless, a death fitting for queen, but as the stallion's intimidating, terrible eyes bore into her, she knew he would not grant her even the small courtesy should he be chosen to carry out her sentence. She tried to look away from him, but was unable to. His glare penetrated her hardcore shell and struck the broken queen inside. He was the angry, helpful kind of glare that consumed the giver's very soul. The lone changeling began to sweat, Shining Armor's hatred radiating from him like a wave of heat from a firestorm, tearing through her like a razor wind. She sat, she saw the look in his eyes, and it almost shattered her resolve. Meanwhile, two ponies of the Royal Guard harnessed themselves to the wagon Chrysalis was riding. Through it was not... Oh, sorry. Though it was not until her cage actually began moving that she was free from the oppressive grip of Shining Armor's glare. Her heart was pounding in her chest. The effect of his stare was immediate. Silently, Shining Armor and his guards turned around and began to escort her to a different location. Even with his back to her, she could still feel his hatred flowing from him like an arctic wind. She, all she could do was hope that the universe would grant her some... Oh, sorry. <laughs> reprieve by allowing anything else to deliver the final blow. Chrysalis had only recently g regained picking Shining Armor as her target. It was true that his love for Cadence was both strong and pure, so pure that a changing could become intoxicated from it. But if Chrysalis had known just how powerful it re he really was, she would have picked a weaker, safer target. She sighed. <gasps> Her voracity had caused her downfall. Her voracity. Okay. Oh, oh, I get it. A couple of minutes passed as she was escorted through the palace. She did not know where she was going. Regardless, she had no control over her destination. So she did not dwell on it. It was not until they had stopped in front of the two huge wooden doors that she looked up. As she looked up, upon seeing the engravings on the doors. One engraved with the sun, and the other with the moon. She instantly knew where she was. The entrance to the throne room. The sun and the moon upon the doors beheld her with cold and impassive judgment as she was brought before them. As the two huge wooden doors slowly opened, Chrysalis eyed the thrones. Sitting upon them were two very distinct figures. The reigners of the sun and the moon of Equestria. Princess Celestia and Luna. She took a deep breath and closed her eyes, trying to steady herself as she carried, as she crated into the center of the room. As she opened her eyes, she saw a guard unlocking her prison. At that moment, she felt a magic aura surrounding her as she was lifted out of the cage and placed gently on the cold stone floor. At least we're being gentle, Crystal thought. The rope around her muzzle was removed but her legs, wings, and magic remained restrained. She opened her jaw and stretched it around, she, glad that she could move it now. The squadron of guards that escorted her left, the door closing behind them with a soft thud. She was alone now. She directed her gaze at the thrones, seeing Celestian Luna, shining armor, and another pony that she did not know set beside them. Judging by the other pony's armor, he must have been a high-ranking guard. The fear of that shining armor would be the ex executioner still lingering, his presence only worsening it. There she lay in the middle of a cold marble floor of a throne room. She stared right back at her captors, puffing out her chest and lifting her head. Chrysalis would not look weak. She would be proud of defeat to the very end. She was a queen and such would die as one. There was nothing to lose and everything to gain. Her choices were clear. She could die a coward and be forgotten in the sands of time, or she could die in infamy as she and her changings remember it forever. The choice was simple. She stared back, looking up at the faces of her demise, her eyes unwavering as she 
studied each face. Luna's face was that of disgust and bitterness. No real surprise there. She was obviously angry at her that her kingdom had been invaded. The unknown pony next to her wore a mask of a royal guard, cold and motionless. Shining armor seemed to be trying to do the same, but he, but he his hatred from where he, her, her where her was okay from where she was was quite visible. His eyes burned with animosity. When her gaze turned to Celestia, she was taken aback. Celestia sat there, her eyes closed, with a reverse with a reversed look upon her face. Reserved, okay. From Chrysalis viewpoint, it seemed there was a hint of sadness there. She would have thought Celestia's look would be similar to her sister's after all. After all, she had injured her and imprisoned her in a cocoon. Instead, however, she wore a mask of impassiveness. The room was silent for a short time, but to Chrysalis, the seconds felt like hours. Finally, the silence was broken as Celestia ex exhaled softly, her magenta eyes slowly opening. Queen Chrysalis, ruler of a changelings, you have brought... You have been brought here today to stand trial for your recent invasion of Canterlot. What do you have to say for your, in your defense? Celestia said, her voice distant and composed. Chrysalis on the floor felt her anger bubbling within her. She spat in Chrysalis' direction. How dare you talk down to me like that? Chrysalis roared. What do I have to say? What do I have to say? Ha! Are you... V here you are, sitting on your high throne in all your wealth and prosperity, and yet you have the gall to ask me why I did what I did? Insolent fools! I invaded your precious little city because I wanted to, my subjects to live better. You think you can sit here with your abundance of goods and be ignorant to the fact that others, other beings want the same thing? My people deserve the same prosperity you ponies do. You think that I want to live in some barren wasteland? My subjects only wanted a better life. But what do you do? You cut them down. You look at me as a monster. But you, Celestia, are the real monster for hoarding all this wealth for yourself. Silence! Luna roared out, the very walls of the castle shaking at the ferocity of her voice. The room became darker as Luna's face contorted in anger. Her wings flared out as she leapt into the air, landing in a deafening crash in front of Chrysalis. Luna's eyes were a blinding white, electricity sparking out of her body. How dare thou speakest to my sister in such an insolent manner! Thou knowest nothing of her actions! Guards, silence her! Luna shouted angrily, pointing at the changing with her hoof. Luna, Celeste said. Her voice calm as she appeared next to her sister while lowering Luna's hoof. It's okay. Please calm down. The room appeared back to normal. Chris's heart was pounding in her chest. She did not expect an outburst from Luna, nor had she ever heard anything like the royal Cantalot voice. But sister, she called you a monster. We cannot tolerate such transgression against you, Luna replied, her wings folding back into position. Luna... It is okay. I have been called many things over the years, and I have done things that I may have regretted. It is all right, sister. Now please, come sit down with me. Celestia said sincerely. Okay, sister. But only because you said so, Luna said, as she made her way back to her throne. Celestia looked at Chrysalis, her face still motionless. Celestia quickly turned as she made her way back to her throne, but she stopped mid-stride. It is true, Chrysalis. Equestria is wealthy. I have worked hard over these long years to make sure my ponies had the best lives possible. After seeing what they had endured, I vowed that I would do everything within my power to make their lives more comfortable. I do not turn away from those who seek assistance. I have assisted the Griffin Kingdom, the Zebra Tribes, and even the Dragons. They ask for help. And I gave it to them. But you, however, did not ask for my help. I would gladly have tried to figure out a way to help you and your changelings, but instead you invaded my city and tried to take what you wanted by force. You have harmed my little ponies, Chrysalis. 
My children, Celestia said, her voice hardening. Just then, Celestia turned her head. This time, her face was cold and hard as steel of a blade. Understand this, Chrysalis. I will crush any threat to my children. You do not know what it is like to have bows you love stolen from you in such a manner. To have loved ones kidnapped and killed. I do not regret my actions. I will protect my children at all cost. You and your changings have harmed my ponies. And I did what I had to do to protect them. Celestia's speech was stern and harsh. Celestia walked back to her throne, sitting down and again doning the emotionless mask she had worn earlier. I have heard your defeat you have heard it, I've heard your defense, Chrysalis. I will now consult with my sister, so that we may judge the appropriate course of action for your transgression, she declared, emotionless. Ha! Do you take me for a fool? I am well aware of my fate. Do not pretend and hide behind the face of this so-called trial. I knew my fate was sealed the moment I was captured. Chrysalis, heal, Chrysalis hissed. Celestia, however, took no notice of Chrysalis. Words, rather. She was whispering to her sister. Chrysalis looked, looked at them wearily, very discussion going on longer than she had expected. Based on Luna's body language, the way her wings were flared and the occasional glare she gave Chrysalis was pointing an accusing hoof towards her. You must argue about my form of execution, Chrysalis thought. Celestia and Luna's decision finally entered, ended when Luna said, Okay, sister, I concede to your judgment. Thank you, sister. I appreciate it, Celestia tenderly replied. At that moment, both Celestia and Luna rose and began walking towards Chrysalis, who in turn puffed her chest and held her head high. This is it, she thought to herself. She braced herself. She would face her final with pride and grace as she lay there in the middle of a throne room. Chrysalis spoke defiantly. Chrysalis spoke, that <laughs> Chrysalis spoke defiantly. I do not regret my actions, which seem so foul to you all. While you sit there looking upon me with disdain and hatred, considering my actions to be folly, I stand proud and unremorseful. You claim that I should have bowed a knee to you, shaming myself and all my subjects at the beginning and begging for your help. I scoff at the thought. It is a fine thing for a good changing to fall and die fighting at the front lines for a native land, where to leave her nest unarmed and go. A beginning is for all things most miserable, for hateful shall such a one be among all those who she shall come in bondage to. What a loathsome dis I'm sorry. What a loathsome I'm, so <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what a loathsome destuition and shaming her lineage and forsaking her noble beauty, followed by an evil and dishonor. Thus thus with this in mind, I said to my subjects, being so impoverished and waiting just a tiny morsel of substance that had been so long denied them, that if so little thought be taken of such a beggar, and so little honor, respect, or pity, let us fight with a will of this land and die for our race, no longer sparing our lives. Abide then, O young changelings, shoulder to shoulder, and fight. Do not begin foul fight nor yet be afraid, but make the heart in your beasts, in your breast, both great and shout, and never shrink back when you fight the foe. So let each one bite their lip, and with their teeth, and abide with their feet firmly upon the ground. Celestia and Luna continued walking slowly towards her, finally stopping a few meters ahead of her. Chrysalis closed her eyes and exhaled, bracing herself for a finale. At the same moment, Celestia closed her eyes, her horn illuminating with a yellow glow. Luna followed suit, her horn, her horn glowing blue. At that moment, Chrysalis saw a sudden coarse tickle among her head and back. She looked up, 
her eyes widening in horror as she saw her horn beginning to fall apart and crumble before her own eyes, her breathing becoming rapid as she began to panic. She looked at her back and noticed her wings were also beginning to fall apart. Again, she looked at her horn, and in her panic, she shook her body in an attempt to make whatever was happening stop. Her actions, however, only sped the process up. She froze as she heard a thump on the ground, looking in abomination as her horn now lay in front of her, slowly turning into dust, her wings soon following suit. What is the meaning of this? Chrysalis shouted. Her train of thought was interrupted as the ground surrounding her bust burst into light. She looked down and noticed that she now lay in the center of some circular rune. The rune began glowing red, but large grew in intensity until it filled the room with a brilliant, bright, and powerful radiance. Chrysalis then noticed black specks following, floating before her eyes. She became <sighs> hysteric at the point. Am I being burned alive? Are they this barbaric? Chrysalis asked herself, incredulously, turning her head frantically as she tried to locate the fire. There was none. The black specks that were that she was seeing were actually parts of her. She looked in trepidation as she noticed her body slowly disintegrating and floating away, leaving nothing behind. The light around grew more and more intense. And one last act of defense, of defiance, she roared out with everything she had left. Celestia! The last sigh she saw was Celestia slowly opening her eyes, giving one last look at the defendant queen before commending her to her fate. Wow! <laughs> Death by disintegration! No, 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 no. We're not going to kill you. We're going to we're going to slowly disintegrate your horn, tear off your wings, and then peel your and then peel your part piece by piece. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Oh, uh, next chapter.